The goal of using an incentive spirometer is to make sure the ball stays in the middle of the chamber when you breathe in. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to discuss the reason for use of an incentive spirometer known as IS. I'm going to demonstrate how to use an incentive spirometer and what's a normal range for an IS reading amongst a male versus a female. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. I provide educational content for nurses and upload on a weekly basis. If that sounds like something you're into, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. So an incentive spirometer is commonly used in an inpatient setting for patients that just had surgery or bedridden, um, just got extubated, or may have a lung infection. The IS is used to help encourage deep breathing and recruit alveoli to help promote lung function to prevent atelectasis or pneumonia. An IS is not to be shared amongst patients and is individual to each patient. At the bottom of the incentive spirometer, you can write your patient's name, room number, and date. The parts of an IS comes with a mouthpiece that has a flexible tubing you can attach to the front part of the IS. When not in use, you want to attach to the top of the groove to prevent the mouthpiece from getting contaminated. The cylinder has a piston at the bottom of the IS that will move up and is labeled by mils, ML, which is inspired volume beginning with 500 mils to 5,000 mils. This piston will move with the force of air inhaled by the patient. You will set the gauge as recommended by your provider. Your fresh post-op patients 24 hours post-surgery goal is usually about one liter to 1500 mils. However, I will attach a link of a male versus female nomogram that is age and height base that recommends where your goal should be. As air is breathed in, the gauge on the side referred to as the indicator will move from best, better to good. So how you will use this device is first set your volume based on your MD recommendations or from the nomogram chart. So in this setting, I'm gonna set it at 1550 mils. I'm gonna inhale out, then apply my lips around the mouthpiece and take a deep breath in slowly over three to five seconds. I'll look at the indicator, move and float up, hopefully hitting best as my target. Once you have accomplished maintaining the float cup in best range, you can advance to a large volume goal. The goal is to do this three times a day during waking hours, 10 times each set during awake hours. If you get dizzy, take your time and do it slower with intermittent breaks in between. As a nurse, this will be important to include in your assessment as a goal and charted to account for progress and a possible decline. Therefore, you can intervene for patient care, notify your healthcare provider if a change occurs. If you find value in this content, be sure to smash that like button and I'll see you, my friend, on the next one. Take care.